Hello everyone, Gomrath here with Gomrath Games, and today I'm bringing you a guide on all the best pets out in Outland. Right now I'm in the beautiful and amazing place of Netherstorm. It's where I'm going to start out, and we're going to start off with this little guy right here, who is the Fledgling Nether Ray. Now the Fledgling Nether Ray is actually a really cool pet, because he is a flying type pet that has a giant diversity of attacks. He's got a beast type attack, a dragon type attack, undead type attack, a um, elemental type attack, flying type attack, and magic type attack. He has six different types of attack, so he can be used in a variety of different teams and do fairly well. He's a really cool pet. He only comes in the power breed or power balance breed. Isn't the best, but it's still very, very solid. I mean, he's got a very nice attack at 322 uh, which is significantly higher than average he is a little bit squishy with uh, 98 health less than your average uh, power power breed or health or speed speed breed but a really solid pet and he's one that I would recommend searching for a rare normally I've said in my other guides that it doesn't really matter if you have a rare or not just because once you get up to the broken isles and to drain or you get all kinds of pet charms and you no longer really need to worry about rare hunting just getting the right breed so the other pet i wanted to briefly mention out here is the nether roach okay now this is a critter type that is has a magic type ability so he's a critter who's strong versus flying types and there's actually i don't know if there's a lot of those to see critter types that strong versus flying okay so you got Oh, excuse me. You've got snails, and then a couple rats, and then promotional pets that I will never, ever own in my life. So that'll do it for Netherstorm. You know, I was leaving Netherstorm, and then I realized that there's a whole bunch of pets over here that you can pick up from this guy. And they're actually fairly inexpensive. So, if you're over here in Netherstorm, near, hold on, let me... Storm Spire, and my exact location for Tom Tom is 4345 and 3519, and his name is Dealer Rashad. And he sells uh, Senegal, Siamese Cat, Crimson Snake, Red Moth, Mana Waverling, and a Blue Dragon Hatchling, as well as Undercity Roach, oh, which you can learn out in Undercity, and a Brown Rabbit Crate. So what makes this guy kind of cool is he's got some fairly decent pets and one that i would definitely pick up is to try to find a health power breed and a power balance breed of the mana weimerling and anyway he's just a cool little pet he's got mana surge uh, as well as feedback which are really strong he also has deflection but i'd say mana surge would take priority over deflection so just come here and pick up all the pets that he has and as always, health power, that's the only uh, non-balanced breed that this guy has. And then the rest of the pets, I mean, if you've already looked at my Easter Kingdoms video, there is uh, all these dragon hawks have the exact same moveset. So, yeah, it doesn't really matter if you pick up the right breed of dragon hawk, but I would go power speed. And then the brown rabbit. Um, get an SS breed. SS is always the best. Red Moth. Uh, power Speed breed on this guy here. SS breed for that. SS breed, only one breed. And for the Roach, it doesn't really matter because you're never going to use him. But he adds a number to your collection. Oops. Alright, continuing our guide of the Outland Pets, we are over in the Blade Spire Mountains. Or Blades Edge Mountains, pardon me. And there are two pets here that are awesome. So the first pet that you'd grab is the Scaled Basilisk, okay? And the HS breed is the one that I would go for. Now he's really cool, okay? So as an HS breed, to have 305 speed, that is really, really, really fast for a non-SS breed. I mean, the SS uh, Mechanical Pandaren Dragonling, he has 308 speed. So this guy having 305 speed and being an HS breed is is pretty stinking awesome. So what makes this guy good is this combo right here. Crystal Prism, Feign Death, and Thrash. He is really good in PvP. 
he's can be used really effectively on some teams and he's fantastic and it's also really easy to get an hs breed because there's only two breeds of this guy the other pet that i would get out here is the cog blade raptor now the cog blade raptor is one of my favorite pets in the entire game okay they're these really cool looking little raptors um let's see come on why is this card not popping up they're these awesome looking raptors and they're strong versus beast type and strong versus critter type now these guys are really really squishy uh not really squishy i mean he's got about 80 less health than average but he's got a really really high speed value and he's just a really solid pet you can use screech to reduce the enemy team speed use expose wounds and then combine that with batter uh, he's got repair if you don't want to go that route. He's just a really solid pet, and he's found all over this area here. So in the Blades Edge Mountains, pick yourself up a Cogblade Raptor, the HS breed, and then an H, no, excuse me, SS breed for the Cogblade, and then for the Scalded Basilisk Hatchling, the HS breed. These are fantastic pets. Definitely throw them in your collection. All right, continuing our tour of the pets of Outland, we are now in Zanger Marsh. Now, Zanger Marsh is home to the Sporling Sprout. And the Sporling Sprout is a fantastic pet. He is a very, very solid tier two pet, meaning that he's not one of the best in the game, but he's really, really solid. And the two breeds that I would recommend picking up on this guy is the HH breed, that is the best out of all of them for him, and the Power Power breed. Now what makes this guy particularly strong is the use of Leech Seed, Crouch, and either Jab or Charge. This whole side here makes him very tanky and makes him last for a long time. Uh, honestly, I've seen this guy out heal uh, magical crawdads which is notorious for one of the highest healing pets in the game and he's just really solid and he's kind of fun to throw in some pvp teams so i would pick him up also he looks kind of cool you know and i know it's not about vanity but he's a cool looking pet and he's who i'd pick up out of zanger marsh okay small side note i am just zoomed all the way into the first person view and i whipped open my map and check that out isn't that kind of cool looking? I've never seen that before. Anyway, we're heading down to Nagrand. All right. Our safari of Outland has taken us to Nagrand or Nagrand. I don't know how to say it. I hear a lot of controversy about it. But in Nagrand, which is what I've called it for ages, probably because my older brother called it that, is the Cleft Hoof Front. Now, he's not anything special, but he looks really cool. And that's why I like him. I really like beast type pets that look gnarly and he's based off of these cleft hoof bulls here which I remember thinking man I really wish I could have a mount that looked like one of these guys and in Warlords of Draenor they came out with several mounts that were based off the cleft hoof uh, let's see yeah these guys here but they're a little bit more intense I mean I just kind of wish that there was one that was just a basic cleft hoof, like this guy here, because I would love to ride that, get on top of him and just, you know, lumber around. So he's the only guy who I'd grab out here in the Grand. All right, guys, we are now in Tarokar Forest, one of the areas that I've done probably the least amount of questing out of all the areas in Outland. But there's a good chunk of pets here that are really solid. So, I'm going to start off by talking about the four alligator pets here. So, let's just look under fishing. Okay, so you have Snarly, Toothy, Chuck, and then Muckbreath. Muckbreath is the one that I don't have. Now, every day, this old man Barlow, he's got a daily fishing quest. And there's one that spawns that is like little crocolisks or something you have to go to your main city whether that be Ogremar or stormwind and then you fish and then you find a crocolisk and you come back and that quest has like a 85 percent chance to reward you with one of these pets and they're pretty strong one thing that's cool about them is that they're some of the only pets in the game that have the rip blood in the water combo 
uh, which is really, really strong versus elementals. Uh, and then they have a basic attack in here because most pets that have rip blood in the water, their middle slot here is just something weird. And this guy has surge, which is a, you know, a decent attack or water chat. So it's their pets that I would definitely recommend trying to snag. Uh, I farmed this for a long time and got these guys and I have a lot of extra pets that sell actually pretty well. They sell for like six, like six or 7,000 gold on the auction house. But, uh, that's the first pet that I talk about here in tarot car. Now, the second pet that I want to bring up is the warp stalker hatchling. Now this guy is kind of cool because he's a beast type pet that has a move that is strong versus flying type. And it's a priority move, meaning that it always goes first. Okay, uh, I don't use him a ton, but there's just a few situations where you have a beast type pet that's strong versus flying type. Really, yeah, it's just a handful of pets that fit in there. And I like this guy because as a priority type move, it does not matter if the flying type pet is above 50% health because you get to go first. So I would snag yourself one of these guys as well. And then the last pet I want to talk about is one of my favorite pets in the whole game, and that is the Flare Youngling. Now, the Flare Youngling is technically in Hellfire Peninsula. Like, this counts as Hellfire. But <clears throat> for some reason... Uh, it's more like it is in tarot card because if you see it still says i'm in tarot card forest now these guys they're not necessarily rare spawns i've had to do some server hopping in the past to be able to see them but they spawn all along here and this is one of my favorite double counter pets and it's the double counter to critter types and anyway he's just fantastic hold on every time i get in combat it messes up my interface <clears throat> So he's got moves that are just fantastic versus critters, and as a humanoid, he takes reduced damage. Oh, there's one right there. So I hunted for a really long time to get an HH breed, SS breed, and a power power breed, but I never could find myself the HH breed. So anyway, those are the three pets. Well, not necessarily three pets, more like seven pets, because the four fishing pets, and then uh, Flare Youngling, and the uh, Warp Stalker. So those are the guys that I would pick up here. But Flare Youngling, definitely a priority on your pickup list, as well as the Warp Stalker Hatchling. They're just they're just great pets, and they have got cool character models. So that'll do it for Tarot Car. All right, our safari has finally led us to the last zone I'm going to cover in Outland, and that is Shadow Moon Valley. So the reason I'm not covering Hellfire Peninsula is because there's two pets there, and they're both garbage. And technically, the Flare Youngling is in Hellfire Peninsula. Like, that's what it'll say on your map. But it's really Tarot Car Forest. It's, like, right up in here. You're in local defense Tarot Car Forest when you're hunting for those pets. So, in Shadow Moon Valley, there is the Fell Flame. Now, the Fell Flame is an awesome elemental type that's got two uh, moves that are also strong versus magic types. So, he's really diverse. One thing that's cool is you can throw down Scorched Earth and it won't you won't have to reapply immolation you know just for nine rounds so you'll be allowed to use conflagrate twice without having to use another thing and you could have either burn or flame breath i'd recommend running burn scorched earth and conflagrate on this guy and just to do tons and tons of damage he's a really really heavy hitting pet uh i mean 289 for a health power breed is it's, it's, I mean, it's fairly solid, but having 1,600 health, that's that's really good. So he's who I'd pick up out here, and that wraps up our Outland Safari. If you found this video helpful, a like rating is always appreciated, and as always, gentlemen, it was a pleasure gaming with you. Also, a shout-out to all the ladies out there. I know you only make up 2% of my viewer base, but thank you for watching. The last thing I wanted to add was that if there was any pets on this list that you thought I should have included but I didn't, Make sure to leave that in the comments below. Also, tell me what your favorite pets are in Outland. Anyway, it was a pleasure gaming with you. Take care.